Welcome to a new episode of Let's Code a Linux Network Driver. Today I want to show you how you can use interrupts with an SPI device driver and we will, yeah, we, because we will need this also for our simple SPI Ethernet device driver. Okay, but now let's recap how our set device is connected to the Raspberry Pi. Here you can see the connector over which I have connected my set device to my Raspberry Pi and basically we are just using an SPI interface here. But we also have one interrupt pin here. And this interrupt pin is important because the firmware which is running on the WISNET W7500 microcontroller will generate a falling edge when a package was transmitted successfully or when a package was received because the driver needs acknowledgement if package was um, successfully transceived or the driver needs to be invoked when a new package was received. And therefore this interrupt pin here is very important for the networking driver. So today I want to show you how to um, use these interrupts. But before maybe let's take a look at the firmware on the W7500 and let's see how these interrupt functions are implemented. So here I am at the um, yeah here I am at the source file for the firmware of the W7500. Here we have the various commands, and down here you can see I'm declaring an ERQ and a reset pin. So depending on which hardware I'm using, if I'm just using the Surf 5 board or if I'm using my custom PCB, the interrupt pin is either GPIO9 or it is GPIO15. And down here I have a funct or a macro to set or reset the interrupt pin. And basically if I'm setting the interrupt, I'm setting this GPIO pin to zero. If I'm resetting the interrupt, I'm setting this pin to one. So 3.3 volts is the idle voltage of the interrupt. And if the interrupt is active, we have a zero, um, zero volt signal on this pin. Okay, so let's see where I'm using the set interrupt function. So here I'm in an endless loop in which I'm checking if I have received new commands over SPI. And here you can see the implementations of the various commands. And down here I'm checking a status register of the TCP IP engine, which is built into the W7500. And in case the send OK flag is set in the status register, uh, trans transmitting a frame was successful and I'm setting this interrupt. Or if I have received an interrupt, I'm also setting um, the interrupt pin. Okay, so these are the interrupts which will occur on normal operation, but we also need to test this functionality. And therefore I've created a command I've called IRQ test. So if I'm writing a B over the SPI bus to my set device, the set device will just set the interrupt pin and this way I can check if the interrupt pin is co connected correctly and if interrupts are working. And we will use this IRQ test command to test if receiving interrupts works. Okay, and in, a, in order to clear an interrupt, we have this get IRQ command. So if I'm writing an 8 over SPI to my set device, what I'm doing is I'm um, transferring the currently pending interrupts um, over SPI to the Raspberry Pi, then I'm clearing the interrupt flags and then I'm resetting the IRQ pin. So then when reset IRQ is executed, this macro basically the interrupt or the interrupt pin will change from a low to a high voltage level basically. Okay, and now I want to modify my driver so it calls this IRQ test in the um, probe function and then I will see if I actually am receiving an interrupt. Okay, so, but to which pin of the Raspberry Pi is this IRQ pin connected? Well, on my Raspberry Pi I've connected it to GPIO pin 25 and this is very important to specify this in the um, device tree overlay here. So here I'm saying the interrupt parent is the GPIO interrupt controller and the interrupt I want to use is the interrupt of pin 25 and this 2 here means the interrupt should be triggered on the falling edge of the signal on GPIO 25. 
Okay, so now let's try to implement um, the, this functionality into the driver and let's see if we can test this interrupt. So let me open up the source file for my set driver. But first I will add two functions here. So I will, I will include Linux slash mutex to have a mutex available. So I'm always sure only one function is currently using the SBI interface. Then I will create a struct, which I will call setNet. And the struct will have two fields. The first field is from the type struct SBI device SBI. And the second one is from the type struct mutex lock. And this here will be the mutex, which I will need to only grant one function access to the SBI. Okay, then I will declare a function. I will call set write read. This function can be used to access the SBI bus. The first argument is, from, is a pointer to the struct set net. And I will call it priv because you can find this term in a lot of cases in networking driver for the private data of the network driver. This is why I'm using this name here. The second argument is a write buffer and the size of the write buffer. Then we will have a read buffer and then we have the size of the read buffer. Okay, and what I'm doing here in this function is I will call the function SBI write to write something out to the SBI bus. So I want to write to priv SBI. I want to write up my write buffer and the amount of bytes I will write is write size. In case this command is um, not equal to zero an error occurred and I will return this error code. And then I will basically just do the same thing again here. But here I can basically return this right away. And then I will use SBI read to read from the SBI bus and I want to read into my read buffer and I will use this read size here. So on success, this will return zero, otherwise a negative error code as well. And then I will declare a second function. I will call set write h read eight because a lot of the commands I'm using here with my set device, I first write out one byte over SBI, which is the command, and then I read back eight, um, eight bits or one byte, which is the response. Net priv, and the second argument here is the command. Okay. Once again, I need a status variable and I need a response variable in which I will store the response. What I will do then is I will lock the mutex. Then I will call set read write read. Here I will pass priv then a pointer to the command I want to write out and I will write out one byte and I will store the response here in this response variable and I will only read one byte back. Then I can unlock the mutex and in case this returns a value which is bigger than zero, I will return status. Otherwise, I will return the response I got. Okay, so this was just a read function which I basically um, need. Okay, cool. So what I will do here now in probe is, so first I can delete this here. So in the probe function, the first thing I will do is I will declare a struct um, set net priv. And down here I'm allocating memory for priv. Okay, and in case this returns a zero pointer, we are out of memory. 
and then I will initialize it a little bit. So priv um, priv spi is equal to spi and mutex in it um, priv lock. Okay, great. And of then. At the end, I will use SPI set driver data to set the driver data here so I can free this again in the remove function. So here I will use priv is equal to SPI get driver data SPI and then I will just k free the driver data here. Okay. Good. Now what is missing here is how I trigger the interrupt and how I request the interrupt. So what I will need here is a new function from the with the return value irq return t and I will call it set irq. Um, this function has two arguments. The first one is the number of the irq which occurred and the second one is a data pointer which is passed to the function. So struct set net priv erq data. So in the erq data, I will also pass a pointer to this um, set net struct. And what I will do here is I will print out erq erq was triggered. Okay, and then I will return erq. Um, handled. No, I choose success. I will return zero to indicate everything went fine. There is a macro for it, but I can't remember it right now. Never mind. Okay. And what I will do here is I will first I will clear all the interrupts in case there is a pending interrupt, and therefore I will use set read eight write eight, and I will write out the command 8, which is get interrupt. And then, I think it was B again, wasn't it? This ERQ test, yes, ERQ test is B. So I will write out a B to um, the SBI bus. Okay. Yep, that's basically it. And the last thing I need before I'm doing this is I have to um, request interrupt. So for requesting the interrupt, I will use the function um, request irq. The first argument is the number of the irq, which is um, stored in SBI irq. The second one is a pointer to the function which I want to execute on IRQ, which is the set IRQ function. The next one contains some flags, but I don't have to set any flags here. Then here I have to specify a name which will appear in proc interrupts. And the last thing I have to pass here is a pointer to the private data which will be available here in the this function here. Uh, yeah. And in case this is bigger than zero, an error occurred, and I will k free um, priv, and I will return with this error code. But else, this interrupt is registered, and if I'm doing this right here, what should happen is the interrupt should be triggered. Ah, uh, by the way, I forgot to add a small delay between the read and the write. So here I will use u delay fifteen to wait some microseconds to give the microcontroller time to react to it. Okay, and of course in the remove function what I have to do is I have also to free the interrupt, so therefore I will use free IRQ. And I have to do this before the freeing here. So I want to free this IRQ and I also have to pass in the IRQ data here. Okay, I guess that should be it. Let me try to compile this program and let's see how much mistakes I've made. Okay, IRQ return T. Okay, that's not the right one. That's also not the right one. 
<laughs> I will beg in a second, I just have to, to look up the correct functions. Okay, I found the arrows. The first one is I of course have to include linux slash interrupt.h and the second one is this function here, mutex init. This is a function, not a macro, so I have to write it here in lowercase letters, but now I should be able to compile it. Okay, let's take a look at this warning here. Or TGG struct. Yep, currently I'm not using it, that's okay. Good, so now let me try to load this module. So on this window I will just follow the kernel's lock. And in this window I will first um, apply my device tree overlay. Okay, and now I will insert my driver. And you can see the arrow key was triggered. If I remove the module again and insert it again, the IOQ was triggered a second time, so this works. Okay, but normally what we should do is, in the um, interrupt handler, we have to read out and check which interrupt occurred. So basically, in here, I should also call the command um, get interrupt to get which interrupt was active. And I should print this out. But if I try to compile and load this, you will notice it will not work. So it compiles just fine. But if I load this module now, you can see I'm getting a kernel panic here. Uh, that's bad of Tmux. And my Pi froze too. So I'm getting a kernel panic here. Because the problem is, I'm trying to, to use non-atomic functions in an atomic interrupt context. So normally in an interrupt service routine, you should only do as few things as possible and leave this interrupt service routine as fast as you can. And in some functions you can't use the interrupt service routine. And an example for these functions would be delay functions or for also some of the SPI functions. And as they can't be used in an interrupt handler, but we need to read out what happened in the interrupt, we need to think of another way. And how to do this, I will show you in the next video. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.